the Joe Rogan experience. I've always wanted to be good at chess. That would be a thing that would be like cool to t tell people like, yeah, I'm really good at chess. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Be a thing. If someone, I guess if so. Anybody but that also, I've ever Joe, met is... like you're really good at a lot of other things. So yeah, it's but like... chess is one of them ones that's like universally respected, <laughs> right? You meet a dude who can play some chess, like, oh, okay. Gary, how's your chess game? <laughs> Terrible, non-existent. <laughs> what is what? <laughs> Now, checkers, on the other hand. <laughs> He'll fuck you up. No, fuck He'll you take up. your yeah. soul and Check. checkers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, flip it up on his side, beat you all day in four squares. That's about it. Oh, just, my God. There's only so many games, and there's only so many I love games. hours in a day. That's the problem. I recently, this is so silly. My dear landlord slash friend invited me downstairs to play this game that was created by the uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad author. Oh. And a game I can't. Or created by the. The author of that book? Yeah, and it's, I can't remember, I don't know what it's called, but it... it Is it called Suck My Dick? It's called Suck My Dick, <laughs> bitch! And it's it's about, it's a financial game. It's like an adult monopoly. Oh, okay. Adult monopoly? I out thought of the, Monopoly wasn't an adult You get game. out of the rat race. I'm always scared when I play Monopoly. You get out of the rat race, and then you go to the, like, big dogs, and it's very enlightening, because you're kind of, like, buying property, and then you're, like, making deals, and... There's something about it that well, I did you read Rich Dad Poor Dad? No, it's interesting. It's it's an interesting way to approach your relationship with money, if you've ever struggled with it or weren't sort of given a crash course on how to handle it or not mm -hmm. handle it. Like, what did you get out of it? Um, I got that like um, the the power that money can have over you is something to reconcile with. You know, in a way that you can live a healthier life and, uh, um, you know, not obviously in a consumerist society, like you kind of have this constant like I need, I need, I need, you know, all that stuff. But uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I, I first of all, I read half the book. I didn't read the whole book, so I can't really like speak on the entirety of it. But it, it gave me a different level of confidence that um, – money was taking from me you know like the word as an artist like i chose the life to be a musician i could have lived in cleveland and sold spaghetti and had a comfortable life but i didn't <laughs> do that <laughs> and because uh, my family has a great they have a great restaurant it that ship has sailed because it's like out of my immediate family's hands but at the time i i've had many many moments in my life where i was like should i move home and just like ditch this music thing because that would be so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, and money's been like this. You know, you kind of have I've I've had uh, a roller coaster and it can like rule my sleep and rule my happiness and my anxiety. Um, but when I, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then in conjunction with this board game I played with Russell, um, it really it, it's so funny. It, it seems you know what? It seems like part of the whole illusion of reality and <clears throat> obviously you need money to survive but the the stock that we put into it is pretty incredible mm. you know and and then and like the things that we think that we need in order to to like satisfy us yes yes uh, and and i feel like there's this weird mind game i'm always playing with it yeah <clears throat> like in in terms of like getting to the next level in my music career, like it's going to take this much. How are you going to get it? You know, all that stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think when you sort of re like release your white knuckles on, on the thing, it all works itself out. I know yeah. that sounds pretty, um, you know, broad, but I think of money is something that's entangled into life. Like yeah. There, there's, there's great aspects to what you can do with your money. But it's entangled into your life in a weird way. There's like, there's what you currently can do, right? Based on your circumstances, sure. based on your life, your health, your responsibilities. There's what you can do, and there's what, what's like, what's humanly possible for you to do. Mm -hmm. And when you see people that are making a lot of money, and you see that money, the money starts to get you thinking that that's what you should do. Yeah. You should do that money thing, whatever that money is. Like, no, no, no. I used to make less money. Now I make more money. And that makes more money than even I make. I got to do what that is to get more money. But then you do that, you realize, oh, but this isn't fun. Yeah. Now most of my day is spent doing something that's not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. That's not what I want to do. So mm -hmm. then it's what you want to do. 
what you can do, what's possible, and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And they don't always go together. Sometimes what you can do is like you have too much responsibilities and you're, you are, you're always going to feel short-sighted by life because it's random and it's crazy and it's chaos. But the money thing can trick you. Like if you have – well, you have a certain amount of money in the bank. Like Brian Callen said it best to me. He's like once you go to a restaurant and you don't worry about what food costs, he goes, everything else is bullshit. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're right. Yeah, because that's that's when you're free, right? When mm -hmm. you know your rent is paid, mm -hmm. you know your your gas is paid, your your car payments paid. You're not worried about it at right. all. You can just go eat. Let's go eat. You don't care. Okay, right, you leave a nice fat tip. Thank you. Good night. Bye. That's when that's when you're rich. Right. Everything other than that is like, what are you doing? Like you just trying to score points because that's what we're doing. We're trying to get the high score. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to get the high score. The high score like man. that high score. Like you're in there yeah. fucking playing centipede all day. <laughs> Like you What's can't, centipede? Like, I never thought about it. Like, old school yeah, arcade game. It was you come down like this. <laughs> you shoot at him. Pew, 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 pew. Shit. It's, oh, it's yeah. Pong era. Like just just past Pong. Super old school dork yeah. shit. That's funny. But that's what it's like. Yeah. It's like you know. Yeah. The minute you stop obsessing about it, it stops becoming a problem. Yeah. In some ways, I mean, it depends on your situation, but. Yeah, for me, it feels like this weird, like spiritual grapple. Where I'm just mm -hmm. like, it, like once I chill out, all the things start. Yes, kind always of... because you're more relaxed. If you're more mm -hmm. relaxed, you're better. If you're better, you attract people that want to do stuff with you. Yeah. Like desperate people, yeah, or anxious people are the worst. Is angry people, people that are mm -hmm. angry that they've been fucked over by the system somehow yeah. or not. I'm not angry. I will say that, and I I feel really grateful for that. Like with how hard I work and like trying to get the things that I really want, I don't feel jaded or or you know, cynical about it. I feel really excited. It's gonna but be I'm a little really tired romantic at the same once time. You, make it, you become gigantic, it's gonna be really romantic. That'd be These nice. These times you're gonna look back on. Me and Brad just, Pitt. Just fucking <laughs> banging it out with Brad Pitt, doing the best music you can Ugh. do. It's hoping for Don't the future to be it. bright. Yeah. There's something about these days, though. Like, yeah. you almost have to appreciate them because when they're I gone, they, they are gone forever. <laughs>